Hello, I would like to talk now on uh, how to use the alarm and how to look after it. Basically, when you receive the alarm, you receive, you receive the sensor and the alarm uh, together. Um, if it is the easy clip sensor, the chances are you receive the uh, insulator inside the sensor. This is just simply put there to stop the alarm buzzing once you plug in the sensor into the alarm. So you need basically to plug in the sensor into the alarm. Once you plug it in, this should not be disconnected again. The reason we have the plug-in sensor is purely to allow nurses and health professionals to change the sensor from point of hygiene and uh, health and safety. So once the sensor is plugged into the alarm, it should stay plugged in for the duration of the treatment. <clears throat> At this stage, with the easy clip sensor, you lift the lever, you remove the insulator, and you, don't, you do not need this insulator again. If unwittingly you lower the lever without <coughs> the alarm will go off and you will not be able to switch off the alarm unless you lift the lever. So lowering the lever will not be, you will not be able to switch off the alarm. And the lever should only be lowered once it's attached to the underpants. And the way to do so is to fold the material of the underpants and you choose the area which you which is going to get wet first, whether it's a boy or a girl. You put the material in the jaws at the front of the clip and you lower the lever. This will anchor the clip to the underpants so, they do <coughs> so the sensor is attached, anchored and attached to the underpants, doesn't move away. And the moment the material gets wet, it will trigger the alarm. So that's important. A lot of people uh, lower the lever and they think there is something wrong with the alarm. This uh, feature is really to make sure that if for some reason the sensor does get, uh, does get disconnected from the underpants, it will trigger so that the user, the user knows that the sensor is not connected to the underpants. <clears throat> the way to attach the alarm, we, we, ha we do have a clip and we have a nappy pin, which is a lockable pin. These pins are very rare these days, and a lot of young mums have never seen one. So it is important to appreciate that you slide the cover slightly out to unlock the pin. And the best place to attach the alarm is near the shoulder of the pyjama top or the nightdress, so that <clears throat> there are three advantages in doing so. The first one is the sensor, the alarm, when buzzing, it is very close to the ear, so the sound is um, loud enough to wake up the child. The second one is when the child turning in bed, it's not digging to them. If you attach it at the front, it, the chances are if they're sleeping on their tummy, it will actually dig into them. So it, the best place is to attach it near the shoulder. And the third one, the third reason is um, initially when, uh, when you're using the alarm, the child might flood the bed, and uh, when it is near the shoulder, the <clears throat> there's a less chance for the alarm to get flooded. So these are, this is the reason we would like the alarm near the shoulder, and for that reason we use the nappy pin to attach it with. So you attach the alarm <clears throat> to, the, uh, to the nightdress near the shoulder, attach sensor to the underpants, and when the alarm, when the child starts to wet, the alarm will go off. They will not be able to switch it off unless they remove the sensor from the underpants and press the reset button. This is intentional so that the child has to wake up and make a conscious effort to switch your alarm. It isn't something which they could do while they're half asleep. That's why we don't have on-off switch on the alarm so you don't forget to switch it on or switch it off and go back to sleep. Having said that, um, if you remember the golden rules, is that all children sleep soundly at home. When they're at home, 80% of them will not wake up to a fire alarm. So the first, for the first few nights, and this is not just the children who wet the bed, even children who don't wet the bed sleep soundly when at home. It's a safe, secure environment. So for the first few nights, it's vital for parents or an adult, when they hear the alarm going off, to come and help the child wake up. 
And by waking up, we mean genuinely wake up, so the child will remember having been woken up by the alarm in the morning. As long as the child is motivated, they will start to wake up very soon after a few days. But initially, however loud the alarm, there's a good chance the child will not wake up. So it is important for parents to help the child or the carer to help the child to wake up. It's no good coming back and complaining everybody woke up but not the child. It's vital to help the child to wake up. <clears throat> As I said, um, the alarm needs to be stopped as soon, you know, quite quickly. The, uh, with the audio alarms, the um, batteries will last for about one hour of continuous buzzing. So you can imagine if you left the alarm buzzing for half an hour the first night and the second night, you could quickly fat flatten the batteries. So it is important for the alarm to be, for the child to wake up, for the alarm to be, to be stopped as soon as possible. The batteries no, under normal circumstances would last more than the duration of treatment. And as, um, as you remember, we do expect the child to be completely dry within three months, a lot earlier than that as well. To, um, if you do, we do send each alarm with a spare set of batteries. If you do need to change the batteries, use ordinary screwdriver, slotted screwdriver. You place the screwdriver in the gap near the battery compartment and you twist. Just twist the screwdriver and the battery cover comes off. Then you could uh, change the batteries by pulling uh, on the red tag. Please make sure you use normal alkaline batteries. Do not use hearing aid batteries, zinc aid batteries. They are not capable of uh, powering the alarm. And there is no need to use silver battery, watch batteries. When you, when you replace the batteries, please make sure you observe the correct orientation when placing the batteries. And the batteries are fresh and not make, don't mix all the new batteries. And make sure the ribbon, the ejector ribbon, isn't um, trapped between the batteries. We do make the battery cover slightly difficult to open, so we don't want children, babies, or so on accessing the batteries. So it is important, that's why the, the battery cover is difficult to open by or using fingers. But if you put a slotted screwdriver and just twist it, it will open the batteries. Under normal circumstances, you do not need to change batteries, but it is something we, we do give you a spare set, and it's easy to, to do so. Something to bear in mind, <clears throat> maybe once a week, you need to wash the sensor in soapy water to prevent the accumulation of um, fluff from the material and urine inside the sensor. That will prevent the alarm from resetting because a, a layer of uh, conductive urine will be will form inside the sensor and bridge the contacts. You just place a sensor in, some, in a beaker of soapy water, shake it, then rinse it on the tap, shake it dry, and that sensor is ready to be, to be used. Maybe once a week, it's a good idea to wash it. If you are using the standard sensor, this sensor, again, plug in, attach the alarm in this, in, as, as described, and you have two ways of using this sensor if you wish. You could either use any sanitary towel, cut in half, insert the sensor between the layers, use the crocodile clip to anchor it in position, and then stick the pad inside the pants. Alternatively, you could attach the sensor on the outside of any underpants, Use a crocodile clip to anchor it, and then wear another pair of underpants so that the sensor is located correctly and not and in contact with the material. So it will the alarm will go off as soon as the materials get wet and is not sort of flying away from the material. So it's important to sandwich it. Either sandwich it between two pairs of underpants, or use a pad. <clears throat> I will come back to explain how to use the bed mat when I'm talking about the bedside alarm. But you could use a bed mat as well with any of these alarms. So <clears throat> this is the audio range, which is sound only. We have got uh, red, green, orange single sounds. The yellow is eight sounds. The dark green is vibrating only. That's for uh, children with special with hearing uh, problems or deaf. And we have the light emitting one for children with special needs. All these alarms are exactly identical in, in the way you could reuse them or uh, change the batteries. 
Then we have the alternate range. This range has got sound and vibration. Again, to use it is exactly the same way. You plug the sensor into the alarm. And as I said earlier, you do not disconnect the sensor. Once it's plugged in, it is there for good. If you think the child is likely to unplug it, you could snip the, the extra bit of the leg which is sticking out, snip it off so the child will not be able to unplug the sensor. <clears throat> Again, located in the same place, attached to the underpants in the same way. The, <clears throat> the thing about the um, ultimate range, they've got sound and vibration. There's obviously the advantage of uh, having two stimuli to start off with. But the additional advantage is, once the child does wake up to the alarm, or to the alarm and the, the sound and vibration, is that you could uh, switch it to vibration only, so the child is not disturbing others in the bedroom, or if they are using it away from home, they can discreetly use it without making others aware. Again, to um, change the settings of the, uh, whether you want vibration only, vibration and sound, or sound only, the switch is inside the battery compartment, so again, it is not easily tampered with or changed. Use, again, slotted screwdriver, place it in the, in the gap, twist, and the battery cover will come off. This range uses AAA batteries, which last sort of 10 times longer, maybe 10 hours. Within the battery compartment, there is a sliding switch at the back. In the middle, it's sound and vibration. If you push it towards the sensor end, it's vibration only. And if you push it towards the, the safety pin, it is sound only. As I said, it's always a good idea to start off with sound and vibration and help the child to wake up. And once they are able to wake up to vibration only, you can change it to vibration if you need to do so. Otherwise, I would leave it on sound and vibration. And the batteries, there is a very little chance that you need to change the batteries. But again, when you're changing batteries, please observe the correct polarity. So they are placed correctly. There is a, a drawing inside the battery compartment to show you how. Again, you could use it with a standard sensor or a bed mat if you wish. So that is the um, ultimate one range. <clears throat> Again, we have three uh, single sounds. The gold is eight sounds, random eight sounds. Then we have the magenta camouflage and the royal blue. Apart from the sound of vibration and the random eight sounds, these have the ability to select individual sound, one of the eight sounds. And again, um, to do, to uh, well, the single sound or, or random eight sounds, the switch is the top. Whether you want vibration or sound, or so vibration and sound, the switch is on the side. And if you want to select individual sounds, again, you remove the battery cover. <coughs> there is a small plastic um, to help you change the settings. Make sure it is on the, uh, if you are changing single sounds, make sure you select the single sound option at the top. And then you could um, lower the, 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 one, the first one. If you want eight sounds or single sounds, the first switch must be on. If you want to select single sounds, individual single sounds then, you have to switch off the first uh, switch and you could select one of the eight other switches to select single sounds. If you want to go back to the original settings, you have to uh, switch the first switch on again. All that is explained in the instruction manual anyhow. <clears throat> again, the batteries are AAA, so you don't need to change them. But if you do, please observe the correct uh, polarity. Apart from that, all, all the other aspects of using the alarm is exactly identical to the audio range and the ultimate one range. <clears throat> then we have the, um, the ultimate one plus record alarm. As I said, um, it, this is normally of specific benefit to autistic children and children with special needs. Because apart from the eight sounds uh, plus vibration, and you could also select 
Uh, it has the ability to record a message, a phrase, music, or even the phone tone of the, of the if the child has got a mobile uh, telephone, then you could uh, record their selected tone. There's a very good chance they'll wake up to that. <coughs> Again, apart from the reset button, there is no external switches. If you do want to change the settings, again using a slotted screwdriver, remove the battery cover. <coughs> this the uh, MO5 alarm uh, does use AAA batteries as well. Three of them. They are all in the same direction. So please observe that when you are changing batteries. If you there is a sliding switch in the battery compartment for selecting sound only, sound and vibration, or vibration only. Or if you want to use the message option, the, the second switch is this one. You flick to, uh, to message. <coughs> once, um, once it's flicked to message, then you always hear the, the message. If you, uh, and you could record up, uh, up to 10 seconds um, to record, if you want to record the message. To record the message, there is a black switch here in the battery compartment. You, you have to press and hold, and then either talk into the alarm in the front, or have it near um, music, or, um, or you record whatever you wish to record, a telephone tone. <coughs> As I said, all the alarms have the nappy pin, and they do have a clip, but where we would like them to be used is best near the shoulder. If you are using this alarm during daytime, you can use it around the waist if it is being used during daytime only. So that is the um, ultimate one plus record. I will uh, <coughs> I'll show you how to use the, uh, the bedside alarm. The, um, again, the bedside alarm, um, all, um, some of the alarms, you might find there is a, a, an insulator in the battery compartment you might have to move if it is there. It's not always there, but you might have to do. This um, alarm uses uh, AA batteries, four of them. Again, chances are you, you never need to change the batteries, but if you, if you do, please observe the correct polarity. When we send the alarms out, they're always on random eight sounds. So, but if you want to change under this uh, cover, you do have the ability to change to single sound or keep it on eight sounds. You have also the ability to select individual sounds, one of the eight sounds you could select. But if you want the eight sounds, please make, uh, read the instructions because switch number one must be on. Um, if you want to record the message, there is the message switch. You need to flick it on, and then again you could. Um, this is on sounds, and this is random sounds. Please observe you have a, a volume control here, so you could adjust the volume. However loud the alarm is for the first few nights, you do need to help the child to wake up. If you flick it on um, on recorded message. There's a test button. May I have your attention, please? So you could actually uh, use the recorded option. We do have a switch here. If you, because with this alarm, you have the ability to plug in a vibrating unit under the pillow. So if you don't want the noise from the alarm, we do have another switch down here. You could flick it to the middle, and then you only have the vibration, no sound. But again, um, please make sure you don't, um, if you're not using the uh, vibrating unit, make sure you don't silence the alarm by doing so. To record the message, you have to have the uh, recording switch the on message, and then you press uh, this large button here, and you either, um, the, the microphone is at the back here, so you could talk into the alarm, or you could even do it online if you have the music or any other sound. So you could, uh, you could do so from the side. We do have also a sensitivity switch on the side of the alarm. If, uh, if you feel the alarm is too sensitive, I'll talk about that when, when I'm talking about the bed mat. And as I said, we do have um, a socket for the vibrating unit. 
and another socket if the parents need to have another um, you could use one of these with a the long uh, wire to have it in the parents room so they could hear the alarm as well but normally the, the sound of the alarm is loud enough um, to hear throughout the house if you leave the bedroom door open you definitely hear it and there will be no chance no need to have an extension unit the uh, <coughs> the bed mat is a single sheet a flat single sheet with very slim connection of the wire. The, all the bed masks come already connected to the wire for, for hygiene purposes. You need to use the shiny surface at the top. You put it under the sheet, and I, I think you need to put um, maybe a pillowcase on top of it, or maybe even a bath towel, depending on how hot the duvet is, how, how hotter the house is, and how um, sweaty the child is. So really, really need to adjust um, the thickness of the towel on top of the uh, sh uh, plastic mat um, to, to suit. Uh, bear in mind there is a sensitivity switch on the side of the alarm as well, if, if you feel it is uh, too, sensitive, too sensitive. Um you can tie the mat with elasticated bands around the bed if you wish, but uh, that's completely up to you. The bed mat plugs at the front of the alarm, and um, there is no on-off switch on the alarm, so the child does not forget to switch the alarm on or intentionally or accidentally switch it off. I know some people might think it's a bit silly of us not to have to unplug this, uh, the mat from the alarm, but that's quite intentional because we do need the child to really genuinely wake up and do something conscious so they could remember the event in the morning. So it might be awkward to do, but it isn't really. <coughs> it's intentional as well that the child needs to un unplug it. Once they unplug the, uh, the mat, then they could press the reset button to switch off the alarm. So. <coughs> This is the, the bed mat um, alarm. We do have a new, very new alarm. It's the wireless alarm. This one <coughs> it has a magnetic clip, so you clip it on the, on the waistband of, of any normal underpants. Again, when you receive this uh, alarm, it will have the isolating uh, clip, uh, plastic piece here, you remove it and you anchor the, uh, the sensor on the underpants in the appropriate place by folding the material, putting it in the jaws and close it. When this alarm goes off, it actually uh, triggers the receiver, which should be placed away from the bed so that the child has to get up and, and to switch it off. Please make sure the, the on switch is always on and always test it before you uh, sort of you, you use it so that uh, you know it is switched on. And they can't switch it off until they, they remove the sensor from the underpants and then they have to press the button switched off. Again, it has to be in the same bedroom if you are treating aneurysis. It isn't really, uh, we do have you could purchase extra receivers if you want to put one in the parents' uh, room as well. But for normal use, the uh, receiver must be in the same bedroom with the, as a child, but slightly away from the bed so that the child has to get up and make a positive conscious effort to switch it off. So I think these are how to use the alarms. This, uh, by the way, <coughs> Make sure you don't leave the uh, uh, clip lever down because that will uh, activate the alarm. And uh, please don't get around this by switching off the receiver because in doing so, the transmitter is still working and the chances are you will flatten the battery of the transmitter. So always, please, if the LED is on, then it is transmitted. Always flick the uh, easy clip lever up so the transmitter isn't wasting the battery, and um, <coughs> and that's the way to do it. If you do need to uh, change the battery in this alarm, again, you need a, a slotted screwdriver. 
you have to place it in the uh, where the uh, clip is, turn it, and uh, you have access to the battery. These are um, a, a 12 volt um, battery, um, A23. And please, again, observe the correct polarity when you are replacing it in the, in the unit. Um, <clears throat> this alarm um, is water tight normally, so please, when you replace the cover, make sure you don't spoil the, um, the seal around it. So please uh, do it carefully and make sure it is neatly, evenly clipped on. <clears throat> the uh, receiver, again, using the same method, um, <clears throat> uses two AA batteries and um, you can uh, change the sound, the buzzer sound if you wish. There are a choice of eight sounds there and um, to, to tune uh, this, the transmitter and receiver automatically um, tune to each other. So if you ever need to retune the transmitter and receiver you use a paper clip, there's a small hole on the back, you press the paper clip, um, the wire of the paper clip against uh, in, inside the hole, the uh, LED will, uh, will light up, and then you lower the lever, and uh, the LED will, uh, will uh, flash, and then the transmitter and receiver are retuned. Um, so that is um, to retuning. One thing I forgot to mention here, there is a code switch as well inside the transmitter when, where the battery compartment is. You could, if you, for any reason, you are finding the other uh, equipment in the house are interfering with the uh, transmission, you could change the codes in, in here, just flick the switches randomly and retune. And the chances are you will, um, you will avoid the uh, interference. <clears throat> that is, um, I think, all about uh, the aneurysis alarms. Thank you.